Hi, Brian here with Practical Prep TX. Wanted to let you all know, first off, that I am changing the name of my channel to The Unplugged Texan. Um, the reason being, I was getting feedback that people are confusing my channel with Scott's over there at Practical Preppers. Um, he uh, does a lot of work out there in South Carolina, does a lot of solar arc installs. So I highly recommend you check out his channel. He's got a lot of good stuff on there, but uh, just wanted to make sure you guys were aware of that so you don't get confused when you see Unplugged Texan start showing up in your feed. All right, so today let's get to what I'm doing. So today we are going to install this EMP shield uh, for my solar system. So I want to protect my Solark 15K inverter here. Now there's three charge controllers on this thing. This thing can only handle two, but I also have another one here that can handle the other charge controller. So I wanted to get into why I'm doing that, how I'm doing that. So uh, let's get into it. So these things protect from what they claim is an EMP blast. Uh, they protect from lightning strikes, solar flares, or any other type of surge maybe that comes from your utility company. Now the main reason I got it was lightning protection because I am in Central Texas, so we do get a lot of heavy thunderstorms, and I spent way too much on this system to not have it <laughs> at least prepared as much as it can to handle lightning strikes. Now there's a lot of arguments going back and forth, and yes, I see your comments about whether or not one of these can actually protect from an EMP blast. Now people claim that an EMP comes from, not from the wires, right? Like a surge would come from uh, your utility company or a lightning strike, but it comes from an exterior source and goes right into the device. And people are claiming, or at least, I don't know, I guess these are electrical engineers maybe claiming that there's no way for this device to pull that out and send it to ground before it has a chance to damage whatever appliance or equipment you had. So. I'm not a professional when it comes to that. I don't know. But what I can tell you is I've had multiple conversations with EMP Shield. They sound legit. They answer my questions straightforward. They also have third-party testing that they've uh, tested this where the military goes to get their EMP Shield uh, or EMP protection devices certified to make sure they can work in an EMP blast. Now, they have that third-party testing. They have that document, those documents on their website. So check those out. Now, they also work with the U.S. Department of Defense the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. They work with grid operators as well and helping them to protect our EMP, protect their equipment. So, and also they're opening up a $1.9 billion chip making facility in Kansas with huge support for the, from their governor. So, I mean, when it comes to due diligence, I feel like I've done as much due diligence as I can and everything seems legit. Now, is it possible that they have bought off the third party testing? that they fooled the U.S. government, that they fooled the grid operators. I mean, it's 2023. <laughs> Anything's possible. I know with as corrupt as our government, every area of our government seems to be now that, I mean, I can't completely rule that out. But I feel like I've done as much due diligence as I can, and I am taking the risk. I paid for these personally out of my own pocket to protect my whole system, including my house as well, which I have another video on you can check out. So I'll leave you all to make that decision on whether you think this is the right fit for you or not. Now, most people that I see arguing don't claim that it can't protect from lightning. It's the EMP side of things. Again, I am not a professional. I am not an electrical engineer. I'm just a DIYer who's trying to do this stuff on his house to protect me and my family of what could be coming down the road. That's it. You make the call for your family. Now, my guess is if we had an EMP just decimate our uh, economy and our society, that uh, even if this thing didn't work, there's not going to be a whole lot of people over at EMP Shield at their building um, handling warranty claims in a Mad Max type of scenario. So, I mean, there's no way to test this for an EMP besides the testing that they've done. And if it doesn't work out, well, we're in the same boat as everybody else. Um, but I did want it for the lightning protection because the lightning protection on this thing, it, it's pretty good. They have a $25,000 uh, insurance policy guarantee that they claim that if you have this thing installed correctly and any of your equipment is damaged by a lightning strike, they will pay up to $25,000 to replace your equipment and make it right. Now, I have read their, uh, their warranty with a fine-tooth comb, and it does say that it needs to have been installed, installed by a licensed electrician. I didn't like that because this is very easy to install. Most DIYers like me can do this in 15, 20 minutes, and I'm assuming most of you, if you bought this thing, have installed it yourself or plan on installing it yourself to save you the money of whatever, three, five hundred. dollars 500 can be as much as $1,000 for a truck roll now for contractors, it seems like, to just show up. So labor rates are crazy right now, so I can understand why you want to do this yourself. But this is electricity. You're dealing with 240 volts if you're putting it in your home panel. So be careful. Um, I don't recommend you installing this. I recommend a licensed electrician. So there. So I did give EMP Shield a call. 
And I wanted to talk about their warranty. I wanted to talk about, has anybody claimed this insurance policy? And they have told me, yes, they have people who have made a claim that things have been damaged by lightning. Not a lot, but they are investigating those and they will make it right what they say. Now they say when a lightning strike hits this, they have actually boxes that have just been completely just broken. Like not broken, but actually the pressure broke it open completely. And they said, well, they've got some of those sitting on their desk. They're working with those people. They will replace them if they're struck by lightning because they do die a hero, basically. So if a lightning strike hits your house, this thing will suck all that energy out, send it to ground, but it dies in the process. They will replace that at $50 uh, flat fee if you send it back to them that it was damaged by lightning. So that's pretty good. I like that. Uh, but that lightning guarantee with the, uh, the caveat that it has to be installed by a licensed electrician, I pushed them on that and said, hey, everyone's DIY in this thing, as far as I can tell. Um, Again, it is dangerous. You're working with electricity. So, but for those of you who do DIY this thing and install it, I asked EMP Shield, hey, how is this warranty any good if 90% of these things are being installed by DIYers? And they said, well, what you can do is if you install it yourself, make a video or take really good pictures so they can see all the wires being connected. They can see the green lights on this thing being on saying it's working properly and send that to them. Now they said, if they have your order, you order it from them, they will put those pictures in a file to basically back up your warranty claim so you don't have to have it installed by a licensed electrician. They did tell me I can put that on this channel and let you know about that. So take advantage of it. If you do get this and install it, take pictures, email them, let them know you heard from Brian of Practical Prep TX on his video that they said they will file that away and just guarantee that it was installed correctly. And if it's not installed correctly, they're gonna reach out and say, hey, that's wrong, change this. So now I can't get you $50 off your order if you use the discount code OFFGRIDBRIAN at checkout. They'll knock $50 off this thing, and I'll leave a link in the description on that as well. I'll also leave links in the descriptions to the exact models I am using for the EMP shield to protect my inverter. Now, my inverter runs on a max of 500 volts from each of the, to each of the charge controllers. That's the max. Now, I'm actually running about 409 under optimal perfect conditions, so this is bigger than that, so that's ideal. Make sure when you buy yours, check the max voltage rating for your charge controllers and make sure you get an EMP shield that's sized up to that amount at least or bigger or you risk damaging things and you're going to need to protect each charge controller in your system now emp shield doesn't make one to cover the three i have in my solar 15k or if you use the eg4 18k pv inverter it also has three charge controllers and actually i'll be making a video on that i am getting one of those inverters that will probably be here in a couple weeks and i'll start making videos on that and compare it directly to what i see how good the solar 15k is so i had to buy two EMP shields, one that will connect to two of my charge controllers and one to connect to the other one. So if you get the EMP shield that you can connect basically to two of your charge controllers, you'll have two blacks, which are two negatives, two reds, which are two positives, and one ground. And you'll also see that the, uh, the reds are separated. They have a little stripe. I'm not sure if you can see that stripe on that one there, but that stripe goes with the black wire that also has the stripe. I'm not sure if you can see that, but I'll get as close as I can to the camera. So, that's how you can identify which ones go to the charge controller. So you'll plug in basically the red positive into say your first charge controller, charge controller one, you'll plug in the solid black wire to the negative portion or the negative part of your solar charge controller into that, basically it's the first one. For me, it's number one, I call it. And then you have the ground that works basically, that's only one ground, it works for all three. You'll need to ground that to wherever you have a ground, whether that's inside your panel. I do have one inside my solar here. I also have one in the gutter below my solar where that's going to be the easiest place for me to install this thing, so I will do it there. And here's the other EMP shield that actually just hooks up to my other charge controller, the third one. Again, there's just one red, one black, one positive, one negative, and one ground. It's a very actually simple install. Um, now, they do have these for your house, which I have another video on. And in the house, it's going to have basically a black, a white for neutral, right, and then your ground. So very similar. Again, these things install in like 15, 20 minutes. I mean, if you don't know what you're doing... Again, don't do it. Leave this to a licensed electrician. Don't get yourself killed. So first things first, don't work inside a live panel or like my solar arc here would be alive. Make sure you shut off power. I have a disconnect over here in the corner that I can literally turn off the, pan the power that goes, the space of my backup from the meter to my panel, which hots up these legs right here. The ones on the very right you see of the screen. And then I'm also going to shut off the inverter. I'm also going to shut off the, my solar arrays. Now I've got DC isolator switches on all of them. I'm gonna shut all of those off. And I'm also gonna turn the breakers off to my battery bank. So I've got literally nothing 
coming into this thing when I'm working on it. The last thing I want is live electricity and trying to be working on that. Not a good thing. And I am not a licensed electrician. Maybe licensed electricians can work on this stuff live. I ain't get a chance at it. And I recommend you don't either. All right, so on the Solark 15K, I am lucky because each of my charge controllers, and there's actually three charge controllers um, total, and each of them have basically four tabs, one, two, three, four. That's all the first one. It's probably hard to see in there, but it says uh, PV1 positive. The two positive cables are on the left, and PV1 negative, and the two are on the right. And you can see my solar array only has one in each. So I've got one positive and one negative. So I've got two open spots on this charge controller, one for a positive, one for a negative. So I can take my wire, my positive and negative wire from my EMP shield and connect it right into those, which makes my install easy. Um, now EMP shield does say you can take the wire, the positive wire and slide it right up in with, if there's enough room there, and that depends on how much room you have on your charge controller in that little area. So, um, but you may have to splice into it. Now you, I could, also pull this red wire out. I could basically splice into it um, using some insulated connectors and then make a three-way and then attach it back into the charge controller. So it really depends on what kind of charge control you have, whether you need to splice into it or try to smash the wire into the one spot um, in the Solaric 15K. Like I said, it's very easy for me. I can just slide into the open spot on each charge controller um, and then run the ground, which I'm going to run the ground into the gutter. Down here, I've got a Oh, big ground lug here that I'm going to slide them right onto, and then it's a done deal in this thing. So um, very easy install. So let's get into it. So for the first uh, two charge controllers here, I am going to use this EMP shield, which allows me to connect two. Remember, because I have two two reds, two blacks, basically two positive, two negatives, and one ground. So this ground wire, I'm just going to run it over here to that ground lug, way on that side over there. And then the positive and negative wires, I'm going to run through right through one of these. I'm not sure which conduit yet, whichever one has the most space. And then just slide the red right into the first one right there and charge the, and the black right into the black. And then on the next set, I'm going to put the black that has the stripe on it and the red that has the stripe on it into the open ones on the second charge controller. And then I've got the third charge controller for these four, um, or not the third, I'm sorry the second EMP shield for the third charge controller that'll be a single one on its own. And I'm also going to put that down here in this gutter because I've got a ton of room in this gutter, obviously. So that's the easiest way for me to do it. So here we go. So I had to strip all the wires. Um, they're all 10 gauge wires. So I stripped them all and now they are ready to slide up in and go into the charge controllers and to the ground. So I am just going to set both the EMP shields here for the uh, two charge controllers for this one and one charge controller for this one. And I first thing I'm going to do is connect the grounds of the two, the two green wires right here. Let me grab them, these two greens, and put them right on my ground lug there. And that goes back to the ground uh, grounding bar for my whole house um, that's only about 15 feet from here. That is the first step. The reason I do that is because if there is any problem with these devices, shorts or whatnot, um, I want that uh, electricity, whatever short there is, going to the ground because that will be the path resist the path of least resistance, rather than my body being the path of least resistance. Um, so it's always smart to put the grounds on first, in my opinion. So I have secured the two ground wires. I just kind of electric taped them together and put them into this ground lug here. Now this is a critical piece of the install. Make sure this is extremely secure because that is where all of that surge is going to go that EMP shield takes in and then sends out to your ground rod. So make sure you put that in, give it a good tug, use the right connector if, you, if it applies for it um, and make sure that is secure. All right, so as you can see, I pushed all the black, the positive and negative wires for my first EMP shield here. That's gonna do the first and second charge controller push those wires through and now they're all hanging right here. And now I'm going to grab the solid red one, which is this one right here. It's got no stripes on it. I'm gonna put that into the first tab. You see, I lifted the tabs up. That first tab that's lifted up there, right there, that is going to be where I'm gonna slide the solid red. And then the next tab that you see flipped up right there, that is where I'm gonna put the solid black negative for the first charge controller. All right, and just like that, I pushed those in. I mean, it's so simple. I just slid them in and then flip the tab back down and that clamps the wire. Now I'm gonna do that for the next, the second charge controller. All right, and as you can see for the second charge controller here, 
I've got the black and the red wire slid into the open spot. And again, you can see back there, if I zoom in, it shows PV1 positive or PV3 positive, PV3 negative. I mean, it tells you where to put these wires on the solar arc. So it makes it really easy. Now I'm gonna do the last charge controller and put those wires up for this last one right here. This black and this red through and into the third charge controller there. And this is a done deal. It's that simple. All right, now we're gonna take the positive and negative wire for our, oh, the other EMP shield, the one that's back there, that's going to just power or protect one charge controller. We've slipped those wires here through the conduit. And now we're just gonna plug them in. Both of those tabs are opened up here. Obviously the one that says positive, uh, it says, let's see, PV3 positive, and there's gonna be the red one. And then PV3 negative is going to be the black one, which I'll try to get a video of it. There we go. So now I'm gonna plug those in and then we are done. Okay, we are all connected with all of our EMP shields protecting our charge controllers. I went outside, I turned everything else back on. I turned on my uh, disconnect there, turned on the unit turned on my uh, or turned my DC isolator switches on my solar array on and we are bringing in 11 kilowatts of solar right now not using anything from the grid my house is using 5.12 kilowatts my batteries are being charged and let's check out the EMP shields there's the first one perfect both green lights are lighting up that means we're good to go that Again, as a reminder, that protects charge controllers one and two. And here's the other EMP shield. That green light is on, which is means we're good. So we are all set with this thing. I'll probably uh, clean these up a little bit inside the box, maybe mount those onto the back wall there, because they do have little mounting holes um, to make it look clean. So I'll probably do that. But other than that, we're done. We should be protected now. Um, if you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. Give me the thumbs up on this thing, and uh, I'll be doing more reviews of this type of equipment and actually i've had a lot of people mention that uh no one's seen anybody open one of these up and break them down because they're completely sealed where you can't get into them and if you do get into it you're going to destroy them well i think i might just go ahead and break one open destroy it so everybody can see the internal components in there and try to dispel any myths that may be out there on the internet about everyone's too scared to open one of these things up anyways thanks a lot everyone uh, see you on the next video